Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Pearl Global Industries Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pallab Banerjee, Managing Director of Pearl Global Industries Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Hello, this is Pallab Banerjee. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our Q4 and Financial Year 24 morning conference call. Along with me, we have our group CFO, Sanjay Gandhi, and SGA, our Investor Relationships uh, Advisors. Uh, I hope all of you have had a chance to go through our annual results and the investor presentations uploaded on the exchange and our company website. Our outstanding performance for fiscal year 2024 is a proof that our strategies are working and a treatment, a testament to our competitive advantage as a global manufacturer. Our sustained growth, despite being one of the difficult years, is driven by leveraging our core strength of multi-country presence of products in market design expertise and strategic customer relationships. This growth primarily stemmed from increased orders from our existing customers, yielding better relationships, as well as value-added sales from the customers which we acquired over the last five years. Let me start uh, with an overview of the industry. The global textile and the apparel market, the global textile and the apparel market is predicted to be relatively flat this coming year due to various macro factors, uncertainties, and volatile geopolitical reasons. Western country major players are being cautious due to the various elections which are scheduled this particular year. While the Asian economy continues to march ahead uh, a little bit more sustainably. However, these developing Asian economies are also confronted with challenges such as escalating labor and production expenses in uh, major manufacturing nations, prompting companies to relocate their production to more cost effective locations. Additionally, the volatility in raw material prices poses some certain certainty challenges for us, but nonetheless, uh, there are enough opportunities in meeting and overcoming uh, and with this evolving consumer preferences for eco-friendly, sustainable, and organic materials, as well as in capitalizing on the rapid expansion of e-commerce, which broadens the accessible marketplaces for apparel brands and the retailers. Now, the Asia-Pacific region dominates the global textile and the apparel market, primarily due to the significant presence of key manufacturing nations. Among these, China remains the largest textile producer and consumer, while India is emerging as a rapidly growing economy for both export as well as consumption. Other notable performance, uh, performers include Vietnam, Bangladesh, and Indonesia where our operations are very well established. Throughout the previous year, the industry encountered several challenges. These included uh, persistent geopolitical tensions globally, which impacted industry operations, particularly in global trades, where demand saw fluctuations, significant fluctuations, and this disrupted the international trade as well. These circumstances have been notable have had a notable influence on the Indian textile sector as well, particularly those segments which are heavily dependent on the exports. Now, if I talk about US, all the retailers and brands have effectively bounced back from the excess inventory situation which they experienced last year. 
Moving forward, we expect to see a gradual enhancement in the consumer confidence as well, highlighting the resilience and the robustness of not only the U.S. economy, but also other worldwide uh, economies as well. However, the industry captains are playing very cautiously optimistic approach. Due to the upcoming elections, end of this particular year, they want to be close, they actually want to buy close to the selling season to avoid over inventory situation once again. Thus, they are preferring the near shore and the faster transit options. For us, uh, now, the fa faster transit options from the manufacturing countries, I think. Now, the Red Sea adverse situation is not in favor of this particular strategy. However, for us, uh, there is no effect of cost for the Red Sea situation that we are facing since last one year, uh, because all our shipping are in FOB terms. As long as we can deliver the goods faster, uh, they need actually one week early, so that the extra time that is needed if they have to go to uh, around the African continent. So that one week is definitely expected from us that we deliver faster. Now our manufacturing setup in Guatemala where transit time to USA is just over a week, is getting more and more queries and lots of interest from these customers. However, the capacity in Central America is limited and would be just a fraction of what we have in Asia uh, till date. Other markets like United Kingdom and European Union are still going conservative. However, I must say that the successful retailers and the strong players are strategizing themselves to achieve a better result than the forecasted macros. Uh, if I talk about Australia, Asia, and Japan, these markets are relatively upbeat. Uh, most of them have come out of the COVID lockdowns only in 2023, especially like if we talk of China uh, and uh, the Australia and uh, Japan market also, we saw the momentum started coming up only in 2023. And these may be relatively distanced from the geopolitical tensions that we see causing a direct impact on the Western economies. Now, if we continue, uh, for us, we will continue to increase our Bangladesh operations, uh, looking at several advantages that we have there. It has readily available uh, a very stable, skilled workforce, experienced middle management, and a very strong ecosystem of banking support, improving logistical infrastructure that is happening in that country, and above all, we have some favorable trade agreements. This enables us and our manufacturing operations to uphold the high production standards and meeting of the service levels that is demanded by our customers internationally. And we can do it with ease. With regard to the wage hike uh, in Bangladesh that we experienced uh, in the last year, which we discussed also in our last quarter call, the increase in Bangladesh wages, if you remember, would create an impact between 12 to 15 percent of our wage bills. Overall, from a profit and loss perspective, it changes by approximately 1 to 1.5 percent when we compare it to the top line. Now, we had already planned to overcome this uh, challenge through automation and efficiency improvements. The current devaluation that happened in the Bangladesh Dhaka, uh, which took place recently, is an additional help to us. In Vietnam, we will continue to grow. However, at a relatively steady pace, like whatever you have seen in the last three to four years, the kind of pace that we had, uh, we will continue to grow there, but with a relatively steady pace. And continue to service our higher end customers. Uh, Indonesia uh, will gain back its numbers. Uh, these were down over the last two years. When we were building and to our new facility, away from the seashore. If you remember, like, you know, we had, uh, because of global warming, it was definitely the seashore is not a safe place uh, to run a factory. In India, we enhanced our existing capacities in the states of Haryana, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu over the last year. And going forward, you will see us investing and starting production in other states as well, where we find there are availability of trained labor force and is relatively less expensive than our existing production locations. We will plan to further automate all our facilities 
and all our processes. Maximize the use of existing capacities and expanding them. We will continue to invest in improving our operations, implementing stronger governance processes, digitization of all our factories, and improving our financial rating. <laughs> we are already aware of our dividend and capital allocation policies. We already have announced our strategic plans and objectives for 2028, and we feel that we are marching solidly on track. We will continue to add and grow with customers who are getting stronger in the world market. We will stay away and decrease our exposure for anyone which is becoming financially weak <clears throat> or we feel we are risky. We will see us continuing to enhance our achievements by exceeding our past records of revenue, capacity, efficiencies, and thereby directly enhancing our bottom line profits. We are dedicated to each of these objectives through the strategy that we shared with you in February meeting in Mumbai, which involves expansion plans, marketing and designing focused product categories, strengthening our strategies with the current customer relationships, and increasing the wallet share, how, how much they're spending with us. So in nutshell, like this is what we have for you. Now I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Sanjay Gandhi, our group CFO, who will provide you with the insights on the financial performance. Sanjay, over to you. Thank you, Palak. Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to announce yet another strong year for our company, marked by remarkable financial and operational achievements at the group level. Starting with consolidated financial highlights, I am pleased to announce that for financial year 24, on a consolidated basis, our revenue has increased by 8.8% year on year to INR 3436.2 crore versus INR 3158.4 crore in FI23. This growth was achieved on the back of our overseas revenue, which witnessed a growth of 21% year on year. For quarter four, FI24, revenue grew by 20.2% 20 year on year and stood at age 77.4 crore. For FI24, we are happy to share that we have crossed INR 300 crore mark with respect to consolidated adjusted EBITDA and reached INR 316.4 crore, which is a growth of 22.5% 22 year on year compared to INR 258.2 crore in FI23. Please note that adjusted EBITDA excludes ease of expenses of INR 8.6 crore in FI24 and INR 2.7 crore in FI23. Going ahead, considering same allotment, ease of expenses for next year will be in the range of INR 4.5 crore to 5 crore. For quarter 4 FI24, adjusted EBITDA witnessed a growth of 30.8% year on year and stood at INR 83.9 crore compared to INR 64.2 crore in quarter 4 FI23. This excludes ease of expenses of INR 2.5 crore and INR 1.4 crore in quarter 4 FI24 and quarter 4 FI23 respectively. Furthermore, our adjusted EBITDA margins saw a year-on-year -year improvement of 100 basis points, rising from 8.2% in FI23 to 9.2% in FI24. The enhancement of operational efficiency notably contributed to increased revenue in Bangladesh hosting economies of scale and subsequently boosting the beta margin for our international operation. For quarter four FI24, we have witnessed 80 bits improvement in adjusted beta margin, which grew from 8.8% in quarter four FI23 to 9.6% in quarter four FI24. Patch for the year showed at 169.1 crore versus INR 153 crore in FI23, which is a growth of 10.5% year on year. However, if you look after past, after minority interest, it showed that INR 174.8 crore in FI24 compared to INR 149.3 crore in FI23. 
For quarter four, FI24 PAT after minority interest stood at INR 51.3 crore in quarter four compared to INR 51.9 crore in quarter four, FI23, which shows a degrowth of 1%. However, there was an exceptional gain of INR 17.8 crore in quarter four, FI23, and INR 13.5 crore in FI23. Excluding that, we have seen we have seen a good profitability both for quarter four FI24 as well as financial year 24. EPS for FI24 grew to INR 40.26 per share in FI24 versus INR 34.45 per share in FI23. Coming to standalone financials, revenue for the year stood at INR 953.7 crore versus INR 1103.8 crore in FI23, a degrowth of 13.6% year on year. The decline is mainly because of low sale volume and net business. One major reason for such decline is the business transition to Bangladesh. For quarter four FI24, revenue stood at INR 320 crore, which is a growth of 16.6% year on year, compared to INR 274.6 in quarter four FI23. The growth witness was due to increase in the bond business. Adjusted EBITDA stood at INR 49.3 crore. Adjusted EBITDA margin stood at 5.2% in FI24 compared to 6.4% in FI23. The margin pressure was due to employee expenses, other expenses being fixed in nature, thus negatively affecting EBITDA with decline in revenue. For quarter four FI24, adjusted EBITDA stood at INR 20.6 crore with adjusted EBITDA margin at 6.4%. PAD for FI24 stood at INR 28.2 crore, whereas quarter four FI24 PAD stood at INR 11.9 crore. While numbers for current financial year 23-24 for standalone have shown degrowth and drop in profitability, we continue to work on capacity expansion in existing factories and also look for suitable opportunities in other states in India on the backdrop, on the backdrop of customer acquisition, increase in wallet share, the strategy which put in place in financial year 23-24. We are confident of improved performance on a standalone basis as we start financial year 24-25. Our strong performance at a group level is reflected with our strengthening balance sheet. On a consolidated basis, our gross debt is similar to last year level of INR 445 crore in FI24 versus INR 448 crore in FI23. Net debt to EBITDA stand at 0.25 times for FI24. Return on capital employed improved from 24.2% in FI23 to 28.2% in FI24, which is a growth of 400 basis points year on year. The return on capital employed has improved due to profitability in overseas market, prudent capital allocation, policy, and efficient working capital management. Margin money earmarked at LC payment is excluded from capital employed calculation. We have used net debt to arrive at above stated return on capital employed. Net working capital days decreased from 38 days in FI23 to 30 days in FI24. Debtor increased to 28 days in FI24 from 24 days in FI23. Inventory days decreased to FI23 in FI24 from 59 days in FI23. Creditor days increased to 52 days in FI24 to from 45 days in FI23. On a steady state basis with the growth in the business and the customer mix, we believe that networking year till days, around 35 days, should be uh, a stable uh, state for us uh, going forward. To add to point of BD wages, Bangladesh wages, and its impact on profitability, to update the recent development in the month of May, Bangladesh Bank has unveiled the crawling peg exchange rate system and allowed bank to buy and sell US dollar freely nearly TACA 117. A crawling tax system is a method of exchange rate adjustment that allows a currency with a fixed exchange rate to fluctuate within a band of rate. It's a hybrid of fixed and floating exchange rate system. Central Bank in Bangladesh has also disbanded the smart formula to make interest rates in the banking system fully market-based linked thereafter. Central Bank announcement were in light of the conditions set by the IMF. During the year, we have incurred a property plan and equipment capex of INR 115 crore and additional INR 1.25 crore approximately towards other IT-related capex. 
capex of PPA property plant and equipment was incurred across geographies for growth, upgradation, automation, and leasehold improvements, and also replacement. In India, we have incurred a capex of 42 crore, where 50 percent was toward the growth capex and 50 percent toward maintenance and leasehold improvement. In Bangladesh, the total capex was incurred 40 crore, where 55 percent was toward upgradation and automation, and 45 percent toward maintenance and leasehold improvement. In Indonesia, we have incurred a total capex of 16 crore towards capitalization of the building from CWIP. And so, in effect, this is also a growth capex. In Vietnam, we have incurred a total capex of 13 crore, of which 5 crore was toward automation, and INR 8 crore was building improvement. In Guatemala, we have incurred INR 4 crore towards growth capex. As you are all aware, we have a dividend policy in place where the company will declare dividend of at least 20% of consolidated profit after tax in a given year to the shareholder. We are happy to share that in the fiscal year of FI24, we distributed a dividend amounting to INR 38.1 crore, which is 22.5% of our consolidated profit after tax. Going ahead with a robust performance in FI24, coupled with a strong and diverse customer base and geographical presence, we are well positioned for a strong performance in the coming years and are well on track to achieve our stated guidance for financial year 28. Thank you. We shall now open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Heyman Shah from Seven Islands PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good morning and thank you for this opportunity and uh, congratulations, uh, Pallav and team, for the uh, fantastic numbers. Uh, I have two broad questions, Pallav. Uh, I think February FY24 presentation uh, says that we are on track uh, uh, to achieve almost 6,000 to 6,200 crore of top line by FY28, as even the CFO reiterated in his uh, comment. So just wanted to check, I mean, considering the slowdown we faced this year and uh, some futuristic, uh, you know, uh, 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 inorganic or organic growth is in mind, or I'm just trying to gauge how we are planning to achieve this uh, 6,000 crore stock line by FI28, and are we on the track to achieve it, and how? I'm just broad overview about it, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mancha. Uh, very valid question. And I was just mentioning in my, uh, you know, uh, speech that we are solidly on track uh, on this strategy that we presented to all of you uh, in the month of February. Uh, the strategy remains exactly the same. We are focusing on the customers who will give us uh, the top tier customers, like who will give us the maximum revenue, then the second tier customers who will, who will continue to grow with us, and then the other uh, tiers, but where we are adding continuously our new customers and executing the business of the uh, current that we have. Uh, of course, like you know, with all the things that is happening in the world, we continue to always uh, very closely watch the performance of our customers as well. If anywhere we find risk, then we start decreasing the volume there. And wherever like, we find the strength, our focus and energy is more towards those guys like, you know, who are performing well. In terms of the numbers that we have talked about, uh, we are, as I mentioned, solidly on track. Uh, we were confident that this particular year, 2024, we would be ending up uh, with the growth. may not be like the 15% or 20% that we talk about at the CLDR level, but this was an exceptional year. Uh, that's why uh, there is a little bit of drop, but still we have closed around 9%. Uh, and I think uh, if you can see, uh, do some comparison with some of the other industry peers, that we are definitely can't say that we are going weak. We are becoming stronger only. And uh, 
naturally, like uh, the uh, play that we have in terms of both growing the capacity, uh, growing uh, the wallet share with the customers, I think all of the strategies that we have discussed and highlighted in today, we are each on each one of them. I would say we are solidly on track. Great, great to hear this, Philip. So basically, barring FY24, I mean, we can comfortably expect at least 15 to 18% CAGR growth, right? So with that, I mean, for FY27, we can definitely expect almost over 5,500 crore of sale. And as you mentioned, the EBITDA should be in the region of 10% or so, correct? Yes, because you see, like, you know, as the number goes up, now we are not uh, in this whole plan, we have not talked about any acquisition of a new business. Okay, so okay. The organic growth that we are doing uh, with the kind of infrastructure that we have, only thing that we are adding are the new facilities to, to this plan. Of course, like, we will always be open if some other opportunity comes up, we will look into that. But this particular plan that we have, we are, I think, solidly on track. And as the number goes up, always there are operational efficiency that builds up. So that gives us that you know, confidence also in terms of the bottom line performance that we have been promising all of you. Exactly. So that number continues to improve. Yeah, great, great. Hello. Fantastic to hear that. Or lastly, with this respect to this only, with this existing infrastructure, what kind of revenues, optimum revenues we can generate I mean, as of today, barring the expansion uh, which we are planning in the next two, three years or so to reach almost 6,000 crores, I think we need to invest something. But with the existing infrastructure, what kind of revenues and what kind of sales we can generate? Yeah, so if you see, like, you know, uh, if you go back uh, one year, one and a half year, we had uh, the kind of infrastructure that we had, we could maximize it towards uh, 80 million pieces of production. Right, right. Now, as I speak to you today, uh, this is enhanced already to about 84 million pieces approximately. So this number, so even the year was tough, but we didn't change the plan because you see like we are continuously in touch with our strategic customers, how they are thinking, what are they are planning for the next two to three years. So that conversation is always solidly on. So with that, uh, we have not stopped in the background our enhancement capacities with the existing infrastructure that we have had. And then, uh, you know, this particular year, as I mentioned, like in India, uh, wherever we had the factories, so we are definitely maximizing those capacities and building up to be ready uh, if the business, as the business goes up, uh, we should be able to service it well. Because in India, we don't have uh, so much of partner factory, but yes, like we are continuing to try and uh, get uh, some partnerships as well. Uh, so that is happening in India. Uh, uh, now, going forward, uh, we are seeing a good opportunity because of the government uh, initiatives and all. We can uh, open up some facilities in the other states where the availability of the workforce as well as the cost is better. Uh, similarly, like if you talk of all other regions, uh, in Bangladesh, we have strengthened the current uh, capacity, uh, utilization, and also uh, the partnerships that we have already out there. At the same time, we continue to look for opportunities to grow and acquire more factories. So that will continue to happen. Uh, Vietnam, uh, we already have a good capacity uh, because of our own factory as well as the partnership factories. We continue to grow that uh, number on basis of the capacity already we have as we utilize more and more. In Indonesia, uh, we had uh, the change that, in fact, we had shut down one of the factory and we built up a new factory and more inland. So that has now completed. The numbers will just uh, go up there. So that capacity is no change out there. But Guatemala, the capacity has added in this last one year. So if you see, like, that's how like, we have got from 80 to 84 already, or towards our path to become uh, 120 to uh, 140 million kind of capacity that we should be having. Uh, for 2028, how we are planned. Wonderful, wonderful. And lastly, with respect to this only, uh, will there be any uh, 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 per unit improvement in realizations uh, going forward? Because I think we are adding a good value added production in Vietnam and I think even in Indonesia, right? The high value, high margin products. Yes. Low volume. I think that's that's something, uh, yes, always our endeavor would be to get to a better uh, UVR. But when we do the projections, like what we have shared with you in February uh, mm -hmm. in Mumbai, that's something that we are not even adding those benefits. 
If that okay. comes, if benefit comes, it will be addition. So we are still, still taking like because you see like in our industry always there is a uh, variability in terms of raw material cost, uh, in terms of uh, other fluctuating uh, macro factors. So yes, uh, our endeavor always, always at every moment is to get to a better area, get to get to a better uh, you know, efficiency and better uh, realization, better bottom line. So EVR is an important part in that. We we'll definitely will continue to try to get uh, more and more uh, better UVR. But that's something which is, to some extent, we have a control. If we are ex exposing ourselves more to the customers who are giving us a higher value and decreasing ourselves with the customers who are very competitive. So I don't want to you know, restrict that to us. So that is why all our strategy we have made is on the basis of a similar kind of UVR. But yes, uh, if that comes in, as, as we clock better and better, you will see a better advantage from our side. Right, well, fair enough, oh, thank you. And secondly, lastly, just one more question. I mean, uh, the company, the Pearl Group has done fantastic over the last three years once we started all this expansion. I think FY22 EBITDA is now uh, even more, the pack level is even more today, actually. FI22 beta was 150 crore odd, and today the PAT is 170 crore, and FI24, and that's a fantastic growth. The ROC, ROE is amazingly strong. So my question with respect to this is the peer comparison. If I compare uh, Pearl Global with, uh, uh, directly with Gokul Das, because this is the largest company actually, uh, uh, in fact in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, the size of Pearl is even bigger then uh, Gokul Das per se, but as a valuation wise, uh, Gokul Das is the largest peer comparison. I mean, I'll be very honest to compare directly with uh, one on one. What is the difference between us and Gokul Das in terms of the products as well as uh, what do you think where we are lagging in terms of valuation? Because we have, I mean, as for my view, we are uh, present across the globe where the uh, you know, uh, garment uh, industry is penetrated quite well. We have also penetrated in Vietnam, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, including India. Local has just started, I and mean, they are more focused on India. We are also uh, almost now 3,500 crore company. Local does is also talking of 15% CAGR. And today they are almost 2,300 crore company. So in, by 28, they will be almost say, uh, almost 4,500 crore company, we will be almost 6,000 company, 6,000 crore company. So what is uh, there, what we are missing in terms of valuation, according to you? And that's a difficult one. Uh, I would say, uh, see, uh, what when we took over in 2019, uh, uh, the, the way that we have strategized ourselves, uh, <clears throat> In terms of the governance, in terms of all the parameters, all the ratios that we are coming back to you uh, quarter after quarter, <laughs> uh, right. telling that, okay, like, you know, this is our plan and we are achieving that. So I think that journey, maybe uh, Gokulda started before us. Uh, okay. Somehow, like today, uh, Gokulda has got a much better uh, confidence of the, the, of the, I would say, the street uh, right. compared to us. But I think we have also started our communication and conversation with all of you since 2021. And, and uh, I, I can only think of that, like, you know, so maybe like, you know, uh, most of the investors are still watching us, have seen us. But right. I don't see in terms of our performance, in terms of our parameters that we have defined ourselves and, and the kind of EBITDA that uh, we are targeting. Uh, right. We have already improved quite a lot. Uh, we have already said that between uh, by 2028, we should be anywhere between 10 to 12. Even if you talk of 11 percent, then we should be very, very close. And yes, our numbers are uh, would be more. And so far, we are only talking about organic growth. We have not done any acquisition of business. That doesn't mean that we don't want to do it, uh, but that is not the way that we are trying to, uh, you know increasing the value at this point of time, of course. So there is enough opportunity and uh, the, uh, I would say the kind of infrastructure that we had in Pearl, I want to maximize that definitely. And I think you are seeing it. I think all of you are noticing that, okay, this is the infrastructure that we had and this is the kind of result that we can deliver. And 
Today, like you know, we have 300 crore plus in terms of EBITDA. Uh, and if we do 10 to 11 percent that we are talking about easily, uh, as we grow our revenue top line, so that number will continue to grow. And I think it's easy calculation for all of you. And I think that's something the market has to realize and give a proper valuation to uh, Paul as well. And any other thing, like I am very, very open. We are open to listen. We will adopt ourselves to if anything that we are doing wrong or if you think that something has to be corrected in our approach. So that's something like I think we are very, very open and communicative at this point of time uh, with the market. So we are listening. Whatever you're telling us, we will be uh, talking to you. We will be communicating with you. We will be understanding uh, the needs. And we definitely want to increase the valuation because uh, a proper valuation is something that all of us would like to have. Yeah, no, no, I understand, and I appreciate your thought process also because even now the division payout is also amazingly uh, investor friendly. The beta is now stabilizing, and what you said, 300 crore beta, maybe in FY25 with 15% uh, PAGR growth, the 400 crore beta will become 400 crore PAT. But the way it has become, uh, you know, 22 beta has become a PAT of 24. I think. 25 beta can become part of uh, 28. Uh, so that's an amazing journey. I think, uh, yeah, market will take its own course, I'm sure. And uh, all the best, Palak. Thank you for this opportunity. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. The next question is from the line of Ash. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Asha Jain from Jain Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. A uh, couple of questions from my end. Uh, so first, uh, how does Q1 FI only show up so far? So uh, how do you see the demand uh, going forward as well? So globally, many players are bullish on the demand outlook. So how are we looking at it? And uh, do we anticipate any slowdown at an industry level? Uh, Mr. Jain, thank you for your question. I think uh, uh, the demand is at this point of time healthy. I think the biggest factor that we had in 2023 was the over inventory situation that we are facing <clears throat> in the US retailers. So that I think now we are completely over with. So naturally, the numbers, I, I think we have discussed it enough in, in the last few quarters. The numbers, I was expecting it to jump up by uh, that kind of, you know, the depth. Uh, whatever the uh, you know the decrease that that happened because of the over investigation, that I think is back. So that definitely you will see uh, playing in the market. So I don't think anybody will complain in terms of uh, uh, the book at this point of time. Uh, but if you talk about the U.S. market specifically, then uh, what I find is most of the industry captains are still a uh, little conservative, and they're very cautious. I, I would say they are uh, doing a very cautiously uh, optimistic kind of you know approach towards the business and that's mainly because of the elections because of some of the geopolitics that is going on at this point of time and <coughs> the inflation in interest rates still continues to be high these are things i think it's still uh, affecting uh, the decision making of, of some of these big retailers and all now uh, but it, at the same time they have plans and they are planning for their expansion maybe like low single digit number for this particular uh, financial year if you talk of uh, Europe and the UK, definitely went into some kind of you know, official decision, uh, they said. And uh, Europe also, some of the countries are uh, very slow. But still, I think most of the retailers have been uh, very conservative for some time. Uh, but the better ones, like if you talk things to people like Inditex or some of them, but they continue to be aggressive. They continue to grow despite uh, any kind of challenges that is uh, shown by the market to them. So that, that's something like, you know, there are players uh, who have a strong strategy will continue to grow. And uh, there will be, uh, uh, there will be against uh, the, you know, the macro factors, like even if it is slowing them down, they would have some means or ways, a strategy to overcome that. Uh, if you talk of the Australia market, uh, that's uh, relatively much more bullish. Japanese market is much more confident at this point of time compared to the last couple of years. Uh, if you talk of uh, China market, they had just come out of uh, the pandemic restrictions uh, in 2023, uh, 23, end of that particular year. So they are quite bullish. So I think overall uh, global, and that's why like as a company Pearl Global, we're not only in terms of global, in terms of our manufacturing, but also we want to supply our customers globally. Uh, so for example, a brand, which could be an American brand, but may have be retailing in Asia 
in some of these countries like China and other places, or like you know, a Japanese brand, uh, which could be uh, globally supplying. So we do supply to them globally from all our manufacturing hubs. So that's, that's the objective, that's the intention that Pearl uh, continues to march upon, and we think uh, we are solidly on track on that. So yes, a long answer to your small question of uh, how the demand would be. I think uh, demand is uh, back on track at this point of time. Although it will be conservative, it will be uh, low single-digit growth uh, globally that I personally foresee. Uh, but uh, yes, like if I am with the right partners, if I am with, uh, if I have the attention of the right players who are definitely going to meet the market uh, macro factors, then I can do the same with them. So that's the approach that we have. Understood. Thank you for the detailed answer. So, uh, lastly, just can you provide some information on our company's uh, capex plan for this financial year, FI25? Yeah, uh, Sanjay, you going to take that? <laughs> yes, sir, Pallav, I think you have uh, thought. So, I just like to add here on the capex plan for the FI25 and going forward, so as a part of our four-year plan, we said, you know, we'll be investing anywhere between 500 to 550 crore in next four years. Uh, coming specific to FI24-25, uh, in India, we are looking at a capex between uh, commitment, commitment to the capex around 70 to 90 crore of uh, capex in India for the capacity expansion uh, in other states, which we just mentioned in our earlier uh, commentary. Uh, plus, there will be IT-related uh, capex which will be incurred, which is towards uh, uh, automation and digitization across factories, um, new refactory, and also the sum of the existing factory. Uh, that's in India capex plan. And uh, in Bangladesh, we will be looking for some kind of an opportunity of capacity expansion. Uh, the amount as such is not really confirmed, but yes, we will be looking to add maybe a uh, 1,000 to 1,500 machine capacity in our uh, overall journey, as we have mentioned very clearly that how do we want to build on the capacity, I think that's the plan. So we will be, we are evaluating, we continue to evaluate the existing facility and as and when the opportunity is there, we'll be definitely looking at that. Um, in Vietnam and Indonesia, we have, we don't have any plan of a capex as of now. Indonesia already we have done this year, last year. Um, in Vietnam also there is not much capex. Guatemala we have already completed the capitalization on 31st of March. Uh, so this is a broad, uh, you know, capex uh, bifurcation which is primarily towards the growth. In addition, there may be maintenance capex which may be there in India and Bangladesh considering the factories have been operating for a number of years which can be around 8 to 10 crore in India and likewise same number for Bangladesh. Yeah, thank Understood. you, Sanjay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Sorry, like, you know, so I have a little bit of thought issue uh, today. Uh, but, um, Jan, like, you know, very clear, uh, there are opportunities at this point of time, especially in countries like India and Bangladesh, I think there is significant growth that can happen. So, we do uh, uh, have an eye continuously in terms of any opportunity that is coming our way. So, in India, like as you said, like, we will be opening up some factories in the other states. So that might need some capex, so that uh, we will be incurring. And then Bangladesh also the same. Like, you know, Bangladesh maybe, like, will not go for any kind of, you know, a new facility to build up uh, in the short run. Uh, there are very good infrastructure that is available in Bangladesh. And because of all these, you know, ups and downs that happens in the market, there are some good infrastructure always available uh, for us uh, to look at seriously. So that's something that we continue to look at. If something is good, we'll go for it. Uh, so those are the things, like, you know, uh, as Sanjay mentioned, number-wise, you know, now a direction. And this is the you know, thought behind it, I would say. Understood, sir. Thank, thank, thank you so much. That's all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sanchit Chawla from Shubhkam Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, so, a couple of questions from my side. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to understand, you know, could you just help me understand, uh, you know, what, how has the uh, margin journey, you know, happened from four to nine percent over the last, you know, few years? What were the low-hanging fruits that you've been able to capture? And part B of the same question is now that you've guided for 300 to 400 uh, bips margin expansion uh, over the next, uh, you know, uh, three four years, wanted to understand uh, how how those margins will happen uh, come. So, uh, 
मतलब यू वॉन्ट शेल आई टेक इट so in terms of the margin improvement uh, first we said you know there were uh, you know combination of three pay we have highlighted in our uh, earning calls and we mentioned in a report also the basically the expansion in margin has is a three or four factor one is the operating leverage which was uh, there in some of the factories which we uh, commenced operation but were at the were in the stage of getting stabilized that really helped uh, in terms of improvement in margin the second is the change in the customer mix uh, you know then third is the product it, along with them comes the higher margin product and that is the second reason for us to really uh, bring an improvement in the margin third is the leveraging of our overseas infrastructure so we have marketing design offices in us uk spain now there's infrastructure is capable of handling uh, you know generating a generating a let's say x number of volume earlier it was x by 2 so that helps in overall leveraging of the situation and still we believe there is an opportunity for us to leverage it even further uh, this international infrastructure what we already have we stated our journey is you know from 10 to 12% of beta in next three to four year and pallav also mentioned in his commentary that with the scale what we are targeting to really grow our uh, number of pcs that we mentioned in february from 50 million 51 million pcs or fi 23 base to uh, somewhere close to 90 to 100 million pcs i think the scale will give us enough room to really expand our margin and uh, reach that uh, uh, band which we just mentioned on the vitta side uh, pallav you may please add in case some yeah i think this is exactly what you mentioned uh, we uh, all the three points so yes first is that uh, now we have a very robust uh, governance in terms of how we are investing what kind of capital allocation which new factory that is coming up uh, by how soon it can break even so those are the strategies that uh, we have a very very strong uh, robust governance on that uh, so that something is definitely helping us uh, before that uh, if you look at my history and if, uh, whatever i studied like was a problem uh, that was restricting this margin uh, was this kind of you know, very rigor may not have been done before the expansion because yes the company was in a very very high uh, explosive rate of expansion earlier also but yeah it was not synchronized the top line and and the expansion that was happening uh, so that i think we have plugged that uh, one problem that that definitely helped us in a big way and uh, the infrastructure that has always pearl had been in the international market and have some kind of a representation uh, in the countries like uh, england or spain or or us like you know we built it up much more uh, on it much more professionalized it had the right team right people who can interact with the customers very well so definitely it was and initially a cost was uh, was definitely hitting our bottom line because the volume was still low now as this volume continues to grow up you can continue to see that advantage that you know, any kind of overhead that you built up in the organization like as if the number goes up uh, then definitely uh, it it helps so there were two or three things and any expansion that you now we are doing uh, as anil just mentioned that like, you know, is very very well planned what kind of roi how soon we can hit it where is the customer lined up for it what kind of volume we start with what kind of product that we will be making so those those kind of you know, things are uh, much more uh, well explained you know, i think it seen broadly the thing is because of which you are seeing this change perfect perfect got that and my second question was you know on how is the pricing of the garment decided uh, so uh, if you give the design to the retailer uh, can the retailer in turn give those designs to uh, other manufacturer uh, you know uh, just wanted to understand what percentage of overall garments you supply have your designs you know uh, so there are two things uh, normally for a retailer uh, they have to work always to the retail price points we have certain product uh, at a certain location in the store if you walk in on day 1 or day 360 of the year you will see the price point is very similar at that same location so it's very difficult for a retailer to change the price if you're selling a certain product on a particular hanger or a particular location of, of the store uh, let's say of 19 dollars that will not change if you go back after maybe couple of years or so you might find that the price point remains same so <laughs> naturally what they do is always design into that price point what can what is the new thing that the customer is looking for 
what the fashion trends are so that they can still give attractive interesting uh, you know product to the consumer but at the same kind of price point so this is a little bit of challenge now for us manufacturers we also have to take care of other things uh, to get to that you know what should be the buying price of that now when we are designing something or when we are talking together with the customer to create a product and then do it we have a better control because we know it from beginning okay this is the price point for which this product is getting designed and this is how uh, this product will be sold at this particular price point so you know whatever i do i can plan much much better and then there is the other option is that the uh, the, the certain retailers they have designed something in house and then they go to maybe 10 different uh, manufacturers and say like who gives me the best price uh, get the order so in that case definitely it's a competitive pricing that plays so it doesn't mean that we in the first option when i'm creating a design that i will be getting maybe couple of dollars extra maybe like those 10 15 20 30 40 cents <laughs> better than the other one but yes uh, we get a better control we get a better visibility so that what is important and matters to us uh, okay so i'm not very clear with this i just wanted to try to understand what is your pricing power here Uh, so if you could just help me with you know one data point you know uh, what percentage of your uh, you know overall garments uh, you supply where you have your own design so when we are supplying uh, to the customers today where we have some uh, kind of design input uh, maybe a partial one or a complete one so that number today uh, off hand from top of my head i would say close to about 50% Uh, in which we had right. certain role to play. So that means, like you know, I get an insurance against okay, this is the kind of product that I will be booking at the end of the day. Fifty percent, right? Of our total, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats to the management team for an. Uh, exceptional performance during tough times with the good return on capital matrix as well um my first question is on uh, the data days um when i look at it uh, like 4 5 years ago it used to be in the 45 50 days range and i think last year fy24 you got it got it down to 25 days so uh, can you help us understand what has driven that is it has there been some substitution of margins to be able to bring down uh, data days and also Whether this 25 is sustainable as you scale up uh, in the next three years, so I can start and then Sanjay you can add. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, thank you first of all, Mr. Singhal, uh, for the question, and uh, I think uh, very good inputs always I get from you. Uh, there is now this uh, particular one, like you know, we we had uh, done certain uh, policies and strategies uh, at our end. in terms of both risk mitigation as well as to ease the uh, the working capital so that that particular factoring part is continuing to uh, bring down the number of days uh, that you are seeing and uh, yes like you know going forward if i have to look at it uh, as i expose myself more uh, in terms of other geographies like uh, let's say to japan market or to australia market and all now certain like us market or uh, european market they uh, work uh, more in terms of buy is much more uh, shorter uh, and much more frequent uh, compared to some of the retailers uh, in other these markets it could be uh, they do at longer uh, lead time or maybe like you know they buy twice a year or not just some of them uh, so those those things uh, will alter a little bit i would say but we uh, don't see a huge uh, variation uh, I really like you know if I look at it, if you ask me, I think the best uh, would be around 35 to 40 in that range, uh, 30 to 40 range, uh, maybe maximum 45. But I think that's where like you know we would continue to retain, uh, contain it uh, in in the 30s. Uh, Sanjay, why don't you uh, detail it much better? Yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so basically the total working capital days. Uh, we are we i mean as we keep growing and the scale what we have uh, started or vision to reach it by fi 28 with a mix of the customer from japan australia uh, uk and usa i think our networking capital days could be around 35 to 40 days 
Uh, however, for the debtors days, uh, our target will remain to be hovering around 30 days time period, uh, plus minus 2-3 days, uh, that's what the target is. And I think with all the known record financing uh, we have in place um, for existing one and uh, focus to bring that uh, same, kind of a same kind of a method of realization or mechanics of realization for the new customer, we should be continue to maintain on a debtor days. What Pallav just mentioned about the uh, longer period, a little bit inventory that we have, you know, elongate, elongate the inventory days by uh, four to five days time period. But overall, we are looking at net working capital days anywhere between 35, 37 days. And this is compared to 35 for FI24. Yeah. So FI23 we are 38, FI24 we have 30. So I'm saying we can be anywhere in the range of 35 to 40 days on a net work, working capital days. Net working capital days. Uh, secondly, on the capacity front, I mean, you have 84 million capacity, you're doing 57 million sales. Uh, I mean, uh, your capacity addition is going ahead of the utilization. So I'm just trying to understand that uh, why is that necessarily the case, uh, that uh, we have to constantly add capacity to, uh, to utilize uh, rather than increase the utilization in the existing. I understand different practices are different utilization. But um, but what is the challenge you're facing there? Because India, I know that some of your factories are uh, not very efficiently utilized. But can we not like relocate some of them or or utilize them better? Now, in terms of uh, in our uh, industry, like you know, when we're supplying to some of these international clients, to get a factory approved or get an, a region approved is uh, is is the biggest hurdle. The entry hurdle is, is the biggest hurdle, like you know, if you if you look at it. Uh, so the the compliance norms, uh, the confidence that uh, the teams of, of the customers would like to have on a factory, it takes time. It takes uh, anywhere between six months to eighteen months, uh, if you if you look at it, uh, you know, to certain customers. So that something uh, is is a, is, a, is a I would say a reality of our industry. So. Wherever we are finding that, you know, to build an infrastructure and be ready, because the good thing is that uh, our factory uh, or the cost that goes on into the factory uh, is something that we can control very well. Uh, one is the workers' cost, but that is something uh, in India specifically we are talking about. Like India uh, has a particular challenge. I think uh, I'm sure like <clears throat> all other manufacturers must be also facing. Like it, it, it cannot be only us. That we find uh, the attrition, <coughs> sorry, attrition and absenteeism rate is a little out of control in India. Uh, whereas globally, we find uh, globally means like you know if I talk about very other strong regions like you know Indonesia, uh, Bangladesh, and Vietnam and all, we are able to control uh, below four uh, percent. Whereas India, we are still not able to uh, bring down uh, to that level at all. Uh, we are more than we are almost like double than that number at this point of time. So that that also is is one good thing. Like you know, if we need to, uh, if we see that the demand is going soft, then it doesn't. Uh, we don't have to lay off people uh, because already there is an attrition every month. We see that this kind of average seventy eight percent people are uh, returning is happening in some of these uh, places where we have the factories. So the, definitely. Uh, Two ways we are trying to tackle that. Uh, we are going uh, more into uh, the interiors, where uh, the uh, the we don't have to depend on the migratory level, but on the local level, where at least at least this attrition factor will come down. Absenteeism uh, we will be experiencing as we start the uh, facilities uh, in this location. Um, but uh, in terms of capacity, the good thing that Pearl has uh, is a combination of our own facility as well as partnership facility. Now, if you look at uh, the kind of existing capacity that I had in 2024, and uh, the adjustment that I could do very easily without any, any cost, and still utilize uh, that, it's a very healthy number. So that doesn't worry me at all. Uh, same thing is uh, for the other locations as well. So that is why we don't see this as a big concern, but yes, uh, to be ready to develop a facility to make sure that it is of the highest global standard and some of the uh, uh, retailers like to go through their rigorous process of evaluation and be ready with them. 
that that is something that we continue to uh, be always uh, upfront about and uh, my, my third question is just on the guidance itself i know we've talked about the four year guidance can you just uh, very specifically quantify for fy25 what is the kind of revenue growth band and margin band that you're uh, expecting because i think you have visibility at least for the first half or next four five months of growth so if you could give some sense thank you for the question but that's a question that you always are very direct about in all our calls so yes uh, uh, definitely the market is uh, has come out of of that year uh, inventory issue that that we had earlier so definitely we are back on track on in terms of what we have always said that all our strategies are towards having a uh, you know a uh, cgr of 15 to 18% to even as high as 20% but we will continue to thrive on that direction so if i if you are asking me for this particular year i am seeing that okay we are solidly on track uh, at least in that direction as of now okay and and for the margin margin uh, yes uh, the international uh, location that we have we have definitely a very solid control and uh, we have as you can see in our results there is coming to uh, in india the challenges uh, that we are doing that we are definitely learning uh, every day and we are also uh, having a lot of solutions that uh, digital solutions the digitization of our factory the processes the governance so it is this is always evolving and uh, we are getting more and more confident on that so we'll see a good margin from all the locations going forward so in general uh, in our uh, internally like we every location has to generate uh, that margin that's something that you know we internally always <clears throat> try for but yes uh, one place may have a bit of more challenges compared to the other so that's something that we have to always overcome and so this last quick question is on finance cost it has gone up from 47 crores to 83 crores in two years whereas the gross debt has actually come down a bit and i understand there's some element of leave and uh, leaving aspect as well but still the cost has gone up quite sizably I mean, how should we look at this line item over the next two years? Because you are generating quite a big, good amount of cash flows, although they're not really paying down the debt for some reason. But can yeah, you explain on that? This is high on our list as well. <clears throat> so we are uh, working mm -hmm. on this. So Sadhya, maybe that you can add. <laughs> yeah. So, so finance force, as you mentioned, there is a. Uh, interest only liability you know uh, almost uh, 13.6 crore and that has risen from 8 crore so you see the almost 5 to 6 crore increase is uh, on account of uh, um, interest only liability uh, otherwise if you look at there is increase also but uh, in terms of 83 crore of total finance cost the interest on term loan and the working capital is around 46.8 crore the rest we have the other borrowing cost which we have factoring and plus you know the lc charges and bank lc charges actually and other other the processing fees which is to be paid to the bank for renewal of all our facility across the location um with the reduction in the interest rate there will be definitely optimization and with the cash accrual also there is a definitely an opportunity to keep the interest cost under control um also we are looking at you know um, we will keep looking at some of the prepayment of uh, long term loan which the cost is interest cost is high at this point in time um, having said that the leverage is something which we are very conscious of it and leverage uh, will go in line with the growth strategy uh, keeping a keeping a optimum com combination we as a company has been a conservative in terms of taking a too much loan uh, but at the same time when there will be some growth opportunity growth capex will be incurred there will be some loan which also be taken but at the same time we are cognizant we are conscious of this high interest cost we are monitoring it and taking all uh, steps which are required to control it i think our rating improvement has also helped us in keeping the interest cost under control as far as india operation is concerned and overseas also we are looking at improvement reduction in the cost and uh, also using internal approval to uh, bring it down wherever there is an opportunity to do that Honest. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Gajaria from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on a good topic. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, I request that you use your handset. Your audio is not clear, sir. 
Uh, no, sir, we are unable to hear you. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. If you could use your handset, sir. Uh, yeah, I am using the handset actually. It seems there's some problem at my end. Okay, sir. I'll take it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Sir, is uh, Varun able to speak? Uh, Varun, Mr. Varun, uh, uh, can you? So he said he'll take it offline, sir. He has uh, an okay. audio issue from his end. Thank you, everyone, for joining on the call. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with Strategic Growth Advisor or Investor Relations Advisor. Thank you. On behalf of Thank you. Thank you. Global Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.